Hi everyone, it is Atia back with another video. It has been so long since I stood up in front of the camera and did one of these, but yeah, I'm feeling it and we're gonna do it. And today's video is actually a long awaited, really large book mail haul. I have these two stacks of book mail here. These are the past three months of book mail. So I'm talking May, June, and July. And uh, we're going to jump right into it. But before I get started, I do want to make sure that you are subscribed and that you have clicked the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video or I go live for reading sprints. I also encourage you to check out the Discord link below so you can join the Bibliophiles Unite Discord community as well as my bonfire and my Etsy shop. And let's jump into this. So because I have so many books here, I think it's like 26 books. I'm not going to read the full synopses. I'll read like that little blurb. And if I know anything else about the book that I think is relevant, then I will tell that to you as well. And uh, as always, I have it separated by publisher. So we're just going to start at the top because that's the easiest. And this is from Penguin Teen. I feel like I have another Penguin Teen that's not with this one. So that statement about separating it by publisher is already null and void but this is more than this this is the second book in the davenport series i really enjoyed book one this takes place in the 1910s it follows the siblings and like some other like friends that are connected to the Davenport siblings. They are these wealthy prominent black families and they are trying to find and discover themselves what they want to do with their lives and love and yeah i am very excited about this one i listened to the audiobook of the first one so i kind of want to wait until the audiobook of more than this comes out and this one comes out in november does it give me an exact date new but yeah november of 2024 once again thank you to penguin teen next up we have another highly anticipated book and that is sleep like death by kaylin bayron this is a reimagining of the tale of snow white i believe yeah so it says new york times best-selling author kaylin bayron makes her highly anticipated return to the realm of fairy tales with this thrilling twist on the classic story of snow white this cover is also just absolutely stunning and thank you to bloomsbury for this advanced copy next up we have something that's a little bit different for me this is a memoir and this is did everyone have an imaginary friend or just me adventures and boyhood by jay ellis this is the uh, actor who was lawrence in insecure as well as some other things but i think most people know him as lawrence from insecure and yeah this is his, his tales of boyhood and this imaginary friend who helped him navigate boyhood and eventually became his adult consciousness and thank you to one world books for my finished copy of this then we have blood and fury by tessa gratton and justina ireland this is the sequel to chaos and flame i don't know much about this one because i have yet to read chaos and flame it is still on my tbr but i know that this is fantasy and i guess there are dragons because there's dragons on the cover of this but thank you to razorbill for this finished copy next up we have the color of a lie by kim johnson i'm very excited for this one this is the same author who wrote this is my america which is one of my favorite books so i'm looking forward to this one and this one is an historical fiction following two students or two children um i know that one of the characters passed for white like his entire family passes for white and they move to a white town and there's like some some tension there because of course like if they're found out then violence is bound to come and yeah i'm not sure what the girl has to do with it oh he has a crush on the girl interesting it says two worlds two different versions of himself expertly weaving real historical events with salient reflections on being black in america 
acclaimed author Kim Johnson takes readers back in time to reveal powerful truths whose echoes are still felt. Okay. And thank you to Get Underline for this finished copy. Next up, we have one whose cover I find to be absolutely stunning. I'm <laughs> obsessed with this cover. And that is Blood of the Old Kings by Sung Il Kim, translated by Anton Her. Um, oh, it says there's no escaping the empire, even in death you will serve. Step into a word of necromancy, murder, and twisted magic, a world in need of a hero. From award-winning Korean author Sung Il Kim, and translated by the world-renowned Anton Herr, Blood of the Old Kings begins an epic journey unlike any other. I want to read this before the year is up. I do. I'm trying to see, this one comes out in October. I'm realizing that I have not been saying the, the dates. I'm trying to see if this is the start of a series. I feel like it is because of the way the end. Yeah, I feel like it's the beginning of a series because it says begins an epic journey like any other. So yeah, and this one comes out in October. Then we have Between Friends and Lovers by Shirlene Obuobi, and this is the author of On Rotation. This is a swoon-worthy story of love and friendship in the age of social media where what you see might not be all you get. Okay. I believe this is a love triangle. Yeah, it's a love triangle. Um, and there's a heavy presence of social media. And it says, but Joe, Ezra, and Mal exist in a world where the line between private and public is as blurred as the one between friendship and love. The question is, can they risk defining those lines to create something real? Is it a love triangle or is it polyamorous? I don't know. Now I'm even more intrigued because the, the back doesn't say, but interesting. Is this also queer? I have so many questions now. So many questions. Also, the cover is gorgeous. It's very beautiful. And thank you to Avon for this finished copy. Next up, we have Bitter and Sweet by Rhonda McKnight. This is a story about two sisters who were summoned back to their grandparents' home to help with the failing family business. And they, these two sisters are essentially estranged. They're dealing with grief and sisterhood and all those things. Alongside their story is a timeline where we follow one of their ancestors and her journey as well. Thank you to Thomas Nelson for this finished copy. Then we have five books from William and Morrow. So I'll start with the top one, which is The Secret Keeper of Main Street by Trisha R. Thomas. And this one says, in 1950s, oil-rich Oklahoma, Bailey Dowery, a dressmaker with the gift of second sight, reluctantly reveals the true loves and intentions of her socialite clients, making her a silent witness to a shocking crime. Whoa. I, again, it was, it's been so long since I read the synopsis of this one. That's fascinating. Another one that I got to like bump up on the list. And well, yeah, this is from William and Morrow. Next up from them, we have two books in the same series. So this is Summer on Sag Harbor by Sunny Hostin, as well as Summer on Highland Beach. And these are all like standalone, but interconnected romances. So the first one, Summer on Sag Harbor, says Sunny Hostin celebrates family, friendship, and community in this spirited story set on the stunning beaches of Sag Harbor. As the summer stretches on, Olivia teams up with her new friends to protect their community, and in doing so, she discovers who she really is. Though not without cost, Olivia's search for her authentic identity and her fight to preserve her new Black utopia will lead her to redefine the meaning of love, friendship, community, and family, and to restore her faith in herself and her chosen path. So I guess this isn't a romance. This is just like a contemporary novel, but they're all like interconnected somehow. So that's pretty cool. Then we have the second one, which is Summer on Highland Beach. Sunny Halston 
transports readers to Highland Beach in this irresistible third novel of her New York Times best-selling Summer Beach series. Do, 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 do. A captive, wait, the same, same character, Olivia? Oh, interesting. This is the third book? Okay. So that means I gotta read the, the first one and the second one. I'm not gonna read the synopsis of this one because I don't wanna spoil this one any more than I already have. But yeah, it follows the same character. So these are connected. Fascinating. I did not know that. Next up, we have All This and More by Pung Shepherd. Kind of get it so you can see it. It's a beautiful cover. And uh, this one says, from the critically acclaimed best-selling author of The Cartographers, which I have read, and The Book of M, comes an inventive new novel about a woman who wins the chance to rewrite every mistake she's ever made and how far she'll go to find her elusive happily ever after. But there's a twist. The reader gets to decide what she does next to change her fate. What? This is a choose your own adventure type of... Okay, I'm just gonna read this first page. It says how to read this book. This is a book about choices, their allure, their power, and their consequences. And so, of course, you have a choice about how you want to read it. At certain points in the text, the story will present you with several options about what to do next. You can either allow the book to guide you along with like a more conventional novel, or you can forge your own path by choosing to jump to a different chapter. It's entirely up to you. To stay on the guided path, or if you're not ever not sure what to do next, pick the first option. To forge your own path through the story, Pick any option you like. Have fun. And remember, you can have all this and more. What? Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> this is so cool. I'm trying to find a page where it'll have me choose. Where are the choices? I'm not trying to go too far, too far into the book to find a choice. Oh, 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 here we go. Whoa, that's cool. All right. That's really cool. I don't think, I think the last time I've read like a choose your own adventure was probably in middle school. And I think it was one of those, I think it was the Goosebumps books, but this is a really cool idea and hopefully executed really well. Next up, we have The Melancholy of Untold History by Min Su Kang. It says, empires fall, love dies, myth endures. A beautifully crafted, enriching saga inspired by East Asian mythology the Melancholy of Untold History is Min Su Kang's debut novel. Steeped in history, interweaving four complex yet entertaining stories as they shape and create a nation's literary narrative through the themes of love and grief. Oh, okay. And once again, thank you to William and Mauro for these five beauties. All right. Then we have Truth Be Told by Patricia Raybon. This is a mystery story and it's in the Annalise Spain series. I believe this is either book four or five in this series. Let me see if I can find, what? Okay, where are the other books? I know this isn't the first book or the second. It's either like the third, fourth or fifth. But yeah, this is set in I believe the 1920s and we have an amateur sleuth and yeah. I probably won't read this one for a few months because I do like to read, even though they're standalones, I do like to read cozy mystery books in order because sometimes the later books reference the happenings in the previous books and I just don't like to be spoiled. So yeah, thank you to Tyndale Fiction for this finished copy. Next up, we have Spin of Fate by A.A. A. Vora. Funny enough, this is by Penguin Teen, so I didn't actually... I mean, I've done a pretty good job separating them by publisher, but Penguin Teen just has so many imprints. Oh my goodness. All right. So this one says, Magnificent Beast, Unforgiving Magic, Epic Battles. Do -do -do. I'll read the last paragraph because I feel like in a fantasy novel, that's the one that actually gives you a good wrap up. Before long, the rebels find themselves in the middle of a brewing war. On one side, a violent king of a lower realm is bent on destroying tyrannic law. On the other, the authorities of the upper realms will do anything to maintain their power. Now the young rebels must face both sides head on if they want to stop a conflict that could break not only tyrannic law, but the universe itself. 
Again, thank you to Penguin Teen for this finished copy. Then we have three books from Scribner. The first one being Five Star Stranger by Kat Tang. This one, it says, would you hire someone to be the best man at your wedding? Your stand-in brother, the father to your child. Five Star Stranger is a strikingly vivid debut novel about the commodification of relationships in a gig economy, isolation in a hyper-connected world, and the risk of asking for what we want from those who cannot give. It is the story of a man who finds out who he is by being anyone but himself. Then we have Pink Slime. This is by Fernanda Triaz, translated by Heather Cleary. Very short book too. In a city ravaged by a mysterious plague, a woman tries to understand why her world is falling apart. An elegy for a safe, clean world, Pink Slime is buoyed by humor and its narrator's resilience. This unforgettable novel explores the beauty and fragility of our most intimate relationships and the moments in life when love, responsibility, and self-preservation converge. That's that one. And the last one is actually quite a backlist. Came out a few years ago, but they were doing like a Jasmine Ward, not giveaway, but I don't even know what to call it. But this is Navigate Your Stars by Jasmine Ward. And this is essentially a bound up version of the commencement speech that she gave at Tulane University. And it says, Ward delivered a stirring speech about the value of hard work and the importance of respect for oneself and others. Now in book form, Ward's inim inimitable voice shines through as she shares her experience as a Southern black woman and addresses the themes of grit, adversity and the importance of family bonds the perfect gift for anyone in need of inspiration and it's cool because it's you know has illustrated pages and the amount of text on each page varies so it's a cool cool piece of work Thank you to Scribner Books for these three. Next up from Coquila, I have these two YA contemporaries. We have Paol Meta's Romance Revenge Plot by Priti Chibur. And this is, I believe it's a, yeah, it's a YA rom-com. Fans of Never Have I Ever will be delighted by this laugh out loud debut romance starring perfectly imperfect Payal Mehta, whose plan to get her crush to notice her goes hilariously awry. So that's that one. Then we have Everything We Never Had by Randy Rebe. This one is, um, I know it's about intergen intergenerational trauma and things like that, and we go back and forth in time or we go through time. The manga ball family journey begins with 16 year old Francisco, who has left everything behind in the Philippines to seek his fortune in California. Following this life changing decision, each generation of manga ball boys must forge a path forward while contending with the past. And there are four, four boys, part of the same family that we're following of a different generation. And in the present timeline, three of them are alive and living together. And there's tension between the father and the grandfather. Once again, thank you to, to Coquila for these two. And then we have this stack. A huge, huge thank you to Saga Press for sending me these six books. And yeah, let's jump into it. So starting with Mirrored Heavens by Rebecca Rowan Horace. This is the third and final book in the Between Earth and Sky series. This has a pre-colonial Native American inspiration. Um, it's just great. Like, I don't even know how to describe this series without major spoilers besides the fact that you should read it if you have not already. It starts with Black Sun, moves to Fevered Star, and finishes with Mirrored Heavens. As you can see, well, kind of, I've already started reading this. I got to page 36, and then I put the dust jacket back on so I could record this video. But yeah, I am, I'm looking forward to diving into this story 
even more. Then we actually have two books from Stephen Graham Jones. The first one being The Angel of Indian Lake, which is the third and final book in the series with My Heart as a Chainsaw, but I feel like Ooh, ooh, ooh. let me not read the synopsis forgive me a spoiler i'm trying to see oh it's called the indian lake trilogy haha <laughs> -ha. um and this one final book in the trilogy it's about jade daniel she's a horror slasher fanatic and she realizes in the first book that the things that are happening in her town are exactly what would happen in a slasher fic but of course like no one believes her and that's all i know about that one and that's all i want to know about that one because I want to go in blind and see what happens. And then also from Stephen Graham Jones, we have I Was a Teenage Slasher, which is, I believe, a standalone horror novel. Let me just, yeah, it doesn't seem like it's the beginning of a series. Why is the dust jacket trying to run away? Hello? Okay, here we go. It says, the kills will be poignant, the jokes will hurt, and the violence will be endearing. Everything's turned around for Tolly, for Amber, for all of La Mesa, Texas. Be happy you weren't there. Be happy you're only reading about it. And I guess this is another like slasher fic type thing, which is pretty cool. I just noticed that there's a person in a hoodie behind the words. Then we have a paperback version of The Paper Menagerie and Other Stories by Ken Liu. This is a collection of, well, short stories. And it says, Ken Liu has quickly become one of the most original and thought-provoking story writers of his generation. Deftly riffing off the power of narrative, this collection is as heartbreaking as it is charming. These 15 evocative short stories and novellas explore the poignant history that always haunts immigrants, survivors of war, and our consistent technological advances. An award-winning author, Lou and his stories invoke the magical within the mundane in profound and moving ways. Next up, we have The Sun Forge by Sasha Shronok. This is the sequel to The Dawn Hounds. Yep, wait, where is it? Yes, The Dawn Hounds. This is the sequel to that book, and it is Maori-inspired. This is the second book in the Ensong trilogy, and that's all I'm going to say because I'm not going to read the top because that gives a spoiler for it. I, I'm finding that this year is a year of me rereading first books before jumping into, you know, the sequels. Because when I tell you, I like really don't remember a lot that happened in the original book in this series. And I'm pretty sure it only, it just came out last year, right? It wasn't that long ago. Maybe it was, I don't know. But I remember that I enjoyed it and I was intrigued. And uh, this is actually already out because it says August 6th. But yeah, that's all I, I know. I know that I'm intrigued and there's some talks about like ecological disasters and climate change and things like that. So yeah, the last book in this huge haul, which go me for keeping this under 30 minutes, <laughs> is going to be Black Heart Man by Nalo Hopkinson. Like what? This one is another one that comes out later on in August. And it says the magical island of Chinchin or maybe just Chin Chin, is facing conquerors from abroad and something sinister from within in this entrancing fantasy from the grand master award-winning author of Nalo Hopkinson. Bad turns to worse when malign forces start stirring. Pickens, children, are disappearing and an ancient invading army long frozen into char statues by island witches is stirring to life led by the fearsome demon known as the Blackheart Man. Vekosi has problems in his polyamorous personal life too. How much trouble can a poor student take or cause all by himself as the line between myth and history blends in this delightfully sly take by one of the greatest novelists? Also, this cover is just 
absolutely beautiful. Once again, thank you to Saga Press for this big old stack. And that concludes this three month book mail haul. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down below which one sounds the most interesting to you. Which one do you think I should start with? Make sure you are subscribed and that you have hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video or go live for reading sprints. If you want to support my content creation further, you can check out my Patreon, my bonfire, my Etsy shop. If you are an independent or a small press author, you can also check out my coffee for some spotlight opportunities that you can commission. Also join my Discord community, Bibliophiles Unite, for just like chill vibes and happenings. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Showing. I ain't living for the moment. I see what's mine and I want it. Hungry like a Pac-Man. I'm Bruce Wayne and Batman. I'm Naruto with a Hanzo. Got a sharp mind like I'm Einstein. Cause I'm copyrighting, so it's all mine. Check it for me, I'm in the sky.